obviously been a while since we last saw you in the ring or the cage, just anywhere like that. So how have you been staying busy like since then, really? Um, so after my last fight, I was scheduled to fight, um, I think three or four months right after my last fight. And then I ended up having to pull out about 10 days before the fight. Of course, it was the very, very last practice. I ended up (laughs) tearing some ligaments in the foot. It always happens, you know, last practice. It was the last round of the last practice, um, tore some ligaments. And then since then I've been, wanting to fight but unfortunately when you're um kind of trying to work your way up you have to balance work and fighting so I kind of got caught up in having to get back into the work field because when you if you're not fighting you're not making money and unfortunately I live in the city it's uh, quite expensive so I got caught up in in working for a little bit and then um ever since the pandemic I've been able to train a lot more uh, because I'm not, I wasn't able to go to work. Right. <laughs> what, what were you doing <laughs> so, for work? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I was working as a personal trainer at a gym. Okay. Perfect. Then kind of fits in, uh, with the lifestyle then. Right. <laughs> I thought it would. However, <laughs> no. I was working, I was working at a corporate gym. So they have you hustling uh, from like dust till dawn, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's, that's definitely a grind, right? So uh, yeah. are you are you in California right now then? Is that I am, you, okay. yep. Mm-hmm. Right, because I know obviously uh, the El Nino camp and all that stuff. So, And you've gotten to do corner work in the meantime too. So kind of keeping you close to fights, right, with Leslie Smith and uh, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, super <laughs> exciting. I mean, what is it like just, you know, getting to do that? Do you enjoy the corner work and just being involved with, I mean, especially athletes like them, you can't really go wrong, right? I think just being there for the process and watching how these veterans um, handle the entire situation, it, it, it really opens your eyes to all of the things that I did wrong in my camp <laughs> because I, my camp looked at nothing like theirs. Um, as far as kind of just like, the emotional aspect of it. I don't handle my friends fighting very well. <laughs> uh, I don't get nervous at all really for my own matches, but when they were fighting, I, I hope I did a good job of keeping my emotions under wraps, but I was so like, so antsy and worked up uh, for their matches, but it was a lot of fun. And, and right. of course they both won and it was just, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> Your, your moral support then mostly, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's got to try to keep everything in check as best as you can. I know everyone says that like that it's harder to kind of maybe watch your friends fight then. You're more nervous for them rather than yourself. That's a common case, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> so it's funny how it affects everybody differently, right? But you mentioned the, the foot issue there. Did you have to do surgery for that initially? I did not, know. Okay, <laughs> so not too extreme. But I have to ask about you had, you did have eye surgery somewhat I recently, did have right? Eye which, surgery, yeah. okay. For me, like eye stuff is the absolute worst, right? I, I cannot <laughs> handle it. Like I'm legally blind and I think it'd be great to get like LASIK and fix my vision, but I think I'm just too scared. <laughs> so like what, what exactly was, uh, what happened with the eye? Everything all good now? It seems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything's all good. Um, I did have, uh, my retina, so I didn't actually tear it in practice, but I wasn't medically cleared to fight. Um, it's called lattice degeneration. So it was genetic. Um, I just happen to have very, very thin retinas okay. and there were quite a bit of holes, I guess, in the retina to the point where they weren't able to clear me to get punched in the face. So I had to get that done. And, you know, it was the beginning of the pandemic and there weren't really options for me to fight at that time anyway. So I figured I might as well get it out of the way when there wasn't anything going on for me where I would have the time to recover. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely all lines up nicely. Um, did, do you notice then the difference? Is it like help with vision or feel like with nothing? Just no, no, <laughs> just it prevents injury, not. prevents future yeah. injury. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's good. You know, you don't have to worry about it then, but yeah. Uh, I just can't imagine having to deal with anything like that. So Props to you, because that's my nightmare. And I mean, <laughs> I I don't want to like fuel your nightmare, but it was pretty rough because you have to stay awake for it. Yeah, I can't. And they do that. have to <laughs> they have to like get into certain um, areas of your eye, but they inject it with uh, obviously local anesthetic, so you can't you don't have 
function over your own eye muscles during that time. So they have to stick a metal rod in it and manually move <laughs> your eye to look into different angles so they can get into <laughs> get it. I shouldn't have asked about this. <laughs> and you're awake the entire time. Yeah, that's um I regret asking about that. <laughs> Sorry. I appreciate the insight though. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's move on from that. But uh, <laughs> glad that you're healthy. Glad you're healthy. Uh, so going back to your last fight, though, unfortunately was a loss to Justina Haba, who in hindsight, no shame in that. She is very talented in her own right. And, you know, mm -hmm. having had all this time to kind of look back on it, surely, you know, you had your initial thoughts on, you know, what do I need to do better? This kind of thing. Why did I lose? But having had so much more time and, you know, as you get ready to eventually come back, like what are the takeaways now with, you know, all the time since then from that fight? Don't get choked out. Number good one. one. Good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I really focused a lot on um, my jujitsu following that. I did, a, I think, a couple tournaments right after that between um, when I was scheduled to fight and um, that loss. It's really working on like competition jujitsu, just slowing everything down. Um, we rewatched the footage and I, I jumped the gun on uh, certain positions that I didn't have complete control over. And I, and I got caught doing that. And so really work is focusing on um, just like fight IQ, fight right. IQ and slowing things down and working on control as opposed to trying to kill every, you know, <laughs> at every single moment. Exactly. I mean, that just comes with experience, right? Cause still it was only your third pro fight and yeah. so just kind of picking it up as you go. But um, also I remember from uh, one of your last interviews with James Lynch, shout out to James. He's the man. Um, I love him. <laughs> like uh, you had four fights on your Ryzen deal, right? So yeah. are you technically still with Ryzen or is it like expired now? How's that work out? Um, I, yeah, I have one more fight uh, with them. Um, we were hoping that the last New Year's card that I might be able to go uh, fly out there, but unfortunately they voted to close the borders. Right. Um, so we were kind of holding out. I think the, the vote was happening in the beginning of November. So we had our fingers crossed and unfortunately it didn't go through. Um, I recently looked it up and it looks like there isn't really a date right now for when things are going to open back up. So not really sure. Kind of yeah. at a standstill right now. I know that's that's probably been the big bummer, right? Is the fact that yeah, it's the pandemic's really impacted rising in terms of international fighters. Like they're they're yeah. doing a great job of keeping things domestic with everything yeah. that's happened since then, but it's just really risky you know, if you want to bring in people from outside and all that. So totally hopefully that can get fixed up soon. I mean, the Tokyo Dome show has been delayed several times now because of all this yeah. craziness. So uh, I mean, ideally, though, in a perfect world, would you be hoping for like next month super quick to get in there? Like, are you fully ready now? I, I'm I'm like <laughs> itching. You know, I told my I told my coach I'd go fight in the alleyway if he told me to <laughs> like that. That's just like the uh, that's just kind of where I'm at. I, I, I don't know. I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> When's the last uh, jujitsu competition you did then? Um, so that's also been closed in California as well. They recently just started opening back up um, last month, but it, it was the the ones that I did between um, when I was scheduled to fight and then okay. after the loss. Have you tried to do Submission Underground at all? Because, I mean, they're still going on. No, I haven't. Well, there you go. Maybe we can we can set something <laughs> up. <laughs> just to, you know, get back in there. Yeah. <laughs> As for Ryzen, though, Shinju, like, just, I think it's undeniably a very unique experience that any fighter gets to be a part of. But for you, who's had your entire pro career with them so far, like, I mean, was that overwhelming at first? Just what was, has the experience been like being a part of that promotion at these, at this early stage in your career still? Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you can't deny that that production value is just absolutely unmatched. Um, I definitely feel super spoiled that having been, uh, the, the, my, my debut, um, that being said, I will fight anywhere. I'll fight regionally. I'll fight, like I said, in the alleyway, if I have to. Um, and so we, as, as amazing as it is, it's like, I, I really enjoy the time from the the bell, first bell ringing to, you know, when it ends and um, production aside, 
it, it's just the sport is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And do you enjoy like the Jap Japan aspect? Because obviously that kind of really helps with the atmosphere. Yeah, um, the fans are so, so respectful, almost too respectful. <laughs> I want a little I want a little bit more commotion, you know, when I, <laughs> I want the drunk screaming morons that you get out here. They definitely uh, add a little bit of excitement uh, for my for myself. I, I know some people don't like it. Um, it is a little bit quiet a little eerie yeah <laughs> i know it's uh what a catch 22 or whatever it goes both ways sometimes yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah totally <laughs> very cool i mean have you ever i mean i don't know maybe not recently obviously with the pandemic situation but like obviously ryzen works very closely with other japanese promotions like deep jewels shuto uh you know those guys do you ever had any talks or thoughts about you know maybe competing for them because also great promotions and uh you know doing good things i think uh yeah like i said I, i'm not like picky with the promotion. I just, I really want more experience. Um, I want more cage time. I want to get in the ring. I, I will, I'll do it wherever. Yeah, of course. And, and this is very, it's very interesting to me. Like I remember back to your, your rematch with uh, what Chelsea Legrasse, which was your second fight in rise and second fight of your pro career, second fight of your amateur career as well. Um, I remember seeing your mom in the crowd. I don't know if she was there for your first fight too, probably, right? But for the yes. for the Lagrasse fight, I remember them showing her on camera and all that. And, you know, you're doing your walkout, super amped up. Like, do, do you feel pressure, like having your your parents in the crowd like that ready for you? Or are you just trying not to think about it? What's it like fighting in front of your mom? <laughs> I think I think as soon as the, the bell goes off, um, whatever I felt, about my parents being there just kind of goes out the window. Uh, she's definitely a, you know, a basket case um, before the fights, as I'm sure most uh, fight mothers are. Uh, it is hard to talk to her leading up to the fight because she's she says, you know, parent like things like, right. oh, what happens if you bleed? What happens if you lose? What happens if you get knocked out? And I can't blame her for for you know caring for me in that way, but. I don't really want to hear it before I'm about yeah. to go get punched in the <laughs> face by somebody else. So I, I try to keep the contact with her to a minimum leading up to the fight. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Total, <laughs> totally understandable. Sorry, like, mom. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the same way, I think. Um, <laughs> and my mom would be as well. So uh, yeah. it's funny, though, because like, you know, she's obviously a very famous comedian in Japan and all that stuff. Um, so then that's a little bit different. MMA and stand up comedy, that kind of thing. So how, how did you end up getting into MMA? I'm curious. Oh, I, um, I wish I had a cool story for you, but unfortunately I don't. I just saw it on TV and I thought it was really cool. I did karate when I was younger and I wanted to, I wanted to do it again. That's it. Okay. Hey, that works. It is what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember what you saw on TV? Was it like a, an MMA fight specifically or just some, some random? It was actually on um, the ultimate fighter, uh, the first season with the women. And so Gil was oh, actually okay. the coach um, on that season of the ultimate fighter. And I personally wasn't watching it. I had um, a roommate was watching it in the background. And, you know, by the first couple episodes of the season, I'd walk past. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then by the end of the season, I was like totally <laughs> like sucked into it. Um, I, I had no idea Gil was in the city uh, that and it's just kind of wild that now he's my coach. And that was my introduction to MMA. Yeah, no, that's actually that's a lot cooler. See, when you break it down, because you didn't even mean to, you just stumbled yeah. across it. And then <laughs> that guy watching coach the first season of the straw weights and, you know, the eventual mm -hmm. champion like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Should you come on? Give yourself some credit there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, too, because that season, like in, the most dramatic season, probably <laughs> of all tough. So, like, did you go in with expectations then of like, oh, man, everybody's going to be bitches, you know, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, not to I, say I, that I they are know. bitches, of course. <laughs> no, no, I didn't go in with that. Um, I, I, I was a so impressed uh, by these women. I thought they were such badasses. I, I, I was inspired. Um, I just want. I just wanted to get in there. Right. right. So then, what was your family's reaction to when you were like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go punch people now"? <laughs> uh, I think they 
told my mom definitely misunderstood. I think she thought I was going to like cardio kickboxing at title <laughs> like that. Um, didn't realize that I, I mean, we were doing the four ounce gloves, uh, you know, the broken noses, the torn arms. I didn't think she understood the entire picture. Right. Um, my dad thought I was going to quit. Uh, right after my first sparring session, he thought it was just kind of like a funny thing that I was doing. He's like, okay, good for you. <laughs> but hey, look at us now, right? <laughs> Showed exactly. them. Showed them. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And, you know, obviously, I imagine Gilbert is definitely one of like the inspirations for you, a, a guy that you've you know, followed since then, obviously, but anybody else specifically that like you kind of maybe role models, maybe not try to mold your career after, but that have been good inspirations for you? I think just the vibe that we have within our gym, it's um, very much, a, it's, we're not, we're not a super camp. Um, it's very much a smaller, more intimate environment and getting to see, you know, like I said, Leslie and Carrie uh, go through their camps. It is, it, it's, it's a, it's such a huge, huge learning experience. Um, and we have an amazing uh, coaching staff over at the gym. So it just, no, no shortage of inspiration within my own team. Yeah, for sure. Always good to have uh, unlimited options there. So in a good spot yeah. indeed. And, you know, it's funny, Shinju, because like having you're stuck in this spot, right, where can't really fight until able to sort of with all the stuff. But a lot of people that are kind of maybe not in your position, but just in general, it seems like everybody's starting to really, you know, fighters who are well-spoken and maybe smarter really into the sport have done like commentary work analyst roles on the side have you considered doing any of that or does it interest you at all i i don't think anyone should be giving me a microphone um <laughs> and i don't think i should be allowed to do anything live i uh, <laughs> i don't know how to keep my mouth shut sometimes obviously um yeah that's what the probably people not a good <laughs> not a good idea <laughs> What I mean, in terms of like rise in English side, you know, I think that'd be a cool opportunity. If they came to you, would you consider it at least? <laughs> I would think about it. Yeah. I would probably need to practice. I'd need to get some feedback from someone who knows what they're doing. Um, like I said, I have to work on my own fight IQ. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, maybe that'd be good practice for my, my yeah. own fight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> to work on breaking down other fights. But for now, I don't think I should be trusted behind a microphone. Fair enough. Fair enough. Appreciate the honesty. And so with that, <laughs> with that in mind, like, are you one of those fighters who like, you know, some people really study their opponents, like break it down to a science, like I guess a great example is always Tyron Woodley, people say, but, or do you just focus more on yourself? Like, where do you stand on that line of thinking? I don't study my opponents. Um, my coaches do not like that they um I would go as far as to say they hate that about me <laughs> I refuse to even um hear my opponent's name when they tell me I have a fight I have no idea who I'm fighting I usually find out on Instagram alongside everybody else oh wow who I'm fighting <laughs> um yeah I gotta work on it <laughs> I, that comes funny. with the that comes with the increasing the fight IQ thing I, I'll, I'll work on it Obviously, what? it didn't work out very well for me in my last fight, so I <laughs> got to make some <laughs> make some changes. So as soon as I get my next opponent, I promised Gil that I would watch the fight. <laughs> well, at least you're self aware, right? You know, you're not ignorant about it. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. But you know, okay, just you, change you as for uh, you know, hobbies and stuff though outside of MMA. Like, what are some things that you like to do when? Not training, not not working on uh, the fight IQ and all that stuff. <laughs> um, well, right now fighting is kind of the hobby because I'm not right, right. I'm not really, you know, able to do it full time. So um, that kind of is my hobby. And then outside of that, I'm still I, I still work. Right, right. So do you get do you get much time to like do, I don't know, free time things like, or is it just pretty busy with? All that. Yeah, right now it's a it's a pretty tough balance trying to um, balance working, living in the city, you know, having to um, be able to pay all the expenses that come with living in the city, and then also fighting as well. Pretty yeah. full schedule. 
Yeah, makes sense. Um, so it, it's funny. <laughs> I noticed that you actually have uh, your birthday is two days before mine. So I had to. Oh, cool. I had to ask this now that I'm sure that you did. I've done a lot of celebrating on Halloween as a part of, you know, birthday celebrations a little bit. It's around the time. Right. So what's the what's the coolest birthday party you've had? <laughs> uh, the coolest birthday party I had. I, I mean, I I. I don't think I really celebrated my birthday that much, um, you know, outside of being a kid. I, I remember my dad dressing up as some sort of a monster. Um, and he let all of, you know, when I was like maybe six or seven, let all of us with the three with the Kansas silly spray or what is that called? Yeah. Yeah. And we the all silly got spray. to shoot him, but then it ended up backfiring because, um, all my friends were traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> nobody had fun and everyone was crying hey it's a memory though right? that's, I guess. That's, that's great yeah just assume you know because everybody they always mention to me because my birthday is actually on halloween they're like oh you get like the candy and the presents and it's a big old yeah thing. yeah yeah. Like, yeah yeah i mean is that a good thing you know you really spoil you a little bit but <laughs> it's, it's fun so i just had to ask about that but all right before i let you go should you just you know 2021 goals, obviously, I know you want to fight and all that, but just in terms of life stuff in general, I mean, what are, do you have anything you're aiming for or just kind of going with the flow before uh, we hit 2022? Uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of the, the motto of, you know, trying to navigate the pandemic is go with the flow. Um, just trying to stick to what I can do as opposed to trying to, you know, make things happen. Unfortunately, with the way my contract is, I have to wait for the border to open back up um, before I can really do anything. So kind of at a standstill, just training as much as I can. Hopefully I can get, you know, two fights in before the end of the year. If that happens, I, I would be super happy. Oh, hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.